At the corner of South Ellis Avenue and 57th Street sits the University of Chicago's new cutting edge Eckhart's Research Center. 277,000 square feet of research labs, conference rooms, and even a sub-basement. But the truly fascinating part about this building is how it was built. From the architects to the mechanical contractors, everyone had their own unique set of challenges. Members of HOK, W.E. O'Neill, and Thornton Tomasetti were able to get together and discuss these challenges and the steps they took to overcome them. There were quite a few players. Um, just on the design team, HOK had 16 different consultants. Vibration consultants, a clean room consultant, an electromagnetic consultant. Any lab building has very specific requirements uh, for each and every lab. The faculty needed labs that were free from vibrations, stray photons, or in layman's terms, light waves, and electromagnetic charges. In fact, some of the rebar that supported the building was coated with epoxy to prevent electromagnetic interference. Also dealing with change, faculty are hired and they come in with new requirements and then you're scrambling. The faculty will go through uh, the building and they'll see things and all of a sudden they'll have a new idea. Demolition of three buildings in the middle of the science portion of the university, surrounded by researchers that are working on their lifelong projects, had to be taken into consideration, and we did a lot of sound, vibration, analysis. The biopsych building was actually attached to the building that needed to be demoed, so we had to separate those two and provide structure. And that was accomplished by reinforcing the end of that building and actually cutting off that portion of the demoed building and making it a permanent portion of the old building. So that, that was very challenging. There are no actual academic functions in the building. It is pure research. So it's really just for faculty, the researchers, and then their graduate students. The upper floors of the building are mostly conference rooms, offices, and some physics labs. The basement and sub-basement are where the high precision testing labs are located. The clean room, quantum research lab, and the cryo instruments and detectors are all housed in the basement. The lower levels are completely isolated from the outside world, but each of the labs also has to be isolated from one another to prevent lab results from being affected. With all of these variables in mind, constructing these basements was no small feat. When the slurry wall was complete and all the soil was excavated and you had this enormous hole that was 50 feet deep, that was my favorite time to go there. 55 foot deep basement on a four to five foot thick mat slab, waterproof, and with the mechanical pits, the ejector systems, and the elevators going another 10 or 12 feet deeper than that. When we got down to the bottom of that excavation, we're, we're standing down there 56 feet below ground and water's bubbling up through the ground. That was very exciting. Construction of the research center finally came to an end in 2015. Had it not been for HOK, James Carpenter Design Associates, Thornton Tomasetti, and W.E. O'Neill coming together to overcome the structural challenges, none of the research that takes place in the facility would be possible today.